Welcome to the Joy of the Lord Show. This week's show is brought to you by the RIC Church, anonymous donors, and supporters and viewers like you. Our musical director is Christian Caulfield. And now, to introduce this week's special guest, it's your host, Father Richard Hill. Welcome. Welcome to the Joy of the Lord Show. Thank you for having us into your hearts and into your homes. Come with us on this 30-minute journey into the Joy of the Lord. None of our shows will be complete without starting off with our true movie star of the entire series, and that would be Miss Lammy Pie. Backed by popular demand from Hollywood, she said she went out there to film a trailer. She came back with a camera full of pictures of a trailer. I don't think she understood what filming a trailer meant. But anyway, so she went out and filmed a trailer. But uh, I, think that, I think it meant something a little different than that. But anyway, Miss Lammy Pie, according to the kids, has, has told us another joke. And the joke goes like this. She wants to know if you all know, how does Moses brew his tea? How does Moses make his tea? How in the world does Moses make his tea? Okay, I got the question down. The answer, according to the children, and let me make this clear. When the children have an answer, they'll let me know there's only one answer, and that's theirs. There's a lot of other wrong answers, but there's only one answer. Because I've come up with what I thought were some pretty good answers to some of their questions, and I was made very much aware by them that that was the wrong one if it wasn't the one they were looking for. How does Moses make his tea? According to Lammy Pie, this is what the kids told me Lammy Pie told them. He brews it. He brew it. He brews it. Get it? Get it? Okay. Yeah. Well, don't, don't blame me. Don't blame the messenger. I just do what I'm told. Okay. So Moses, how does he make his tea? He brews it. Okay. Is Lammy Pie, is that okay with you? Did I do okay? Yes? Okay. Good. I think the kids will be happy now. Miss Lammy Pie got her few minutes on the air of fame. All right. Just make sure we do the rest of the show right and let us know the... She gives us the criticism later through the kids. Believe me. The table with me today, I have an old friend of our show and my personally, um, Tom Stickles. Tom, how are you doing? Doing pretty well, Richard. Good deal. I got to play your new guitar a little bit before, before the show. He's been playing 12-string guitar so long that... Most people around here know him as 12-string, 12-string Tom. But what are we going to call you now that you're playing more 6-string? Well, it can still be 12-string. I just decided to take a little change for a little while, do a little something else. Something a little different. Yep. Well, and they might notice a little something different about you when they do the close-ups of you, you know, to look. What's different about you? What's changed since you were on the show last? Oh, man. A lot of things have changed since I was on the show last. For one, I got these. For one, you got some teeth. Yep. All right, got, good deal. Um, got to the dentist. Okay, took, every, took care of all your teeth and everything's all come out right. And got it covered. I got to be careful because you'll bite me now, right? They, you got a good set no, of no, coppers. No. <laughs> no. Well, what else has changed since then? Because I know you've been going through a lot of changes and things, so share well, some of them with us. God's really been, uh, really been working in my life in a lot of different ways. Um, work. And just, uh, you know, with, with the sermons, I've, uh, I, I am finding so many places that, that God leads me to preach on something that I'll learn from. And I, I really like the idea of going to the Bible without some preconceived notion of what I'm going to preach about. Praise God. Uh, before we get <clears throat> too deep into that, because that's a subject that we can, you and I both really, um, you know, we're very adamant about that. The American church needs to learn a lot more about this. Oh, yeah. uh, <clears throat> I do want to point out that I brought up about your teeth for a reason. Our viewers are a family. We're a part of the family of the Lord. <clears throat> Jesus was the firstborn, and we believe in him. He's brought us in through adoption. And so there's people out there that are conscious of their teeth or their, or their looks or they think something's right or wrong about themselves. And, and it's just important, I think, that when we sit at this table, we make it very plain that there's some things wrong with us. Oh, yeah. there's, there's some physical problems and 
maybe even some mental problems and emotional problems, <clears throat> and we're not ashamed of them because what makes us important enough to be here on the air talking to you is not how perfect we are, but how perfect he is. And that's what we share. Sometimes I think that the ministers who minister the best are the ones who accept the most how broken they are. So 12 String is a good friend of mine, and, and he and I share the theology that the best ministers are those who have received the, the most ministry. <clears throat> so that's why I'm going into the big changes, and that way we can share it with our audience and they can understand that the ministers aren't up here and you're down here. That's not how it works. That the Lord ministers in all of us and to all of us, and uh, that a ordained minister does have a calling, or what we like to say is that God qualifies the uh, the called who respond. He calls them, they respond. He qualifies them. He does not respond to the qualified who call themselves. And there's plenty of that going on. Well, I can deliver this. I one of the uh, most vocal critics we've ever had of our ministry, I mean, he stopped eventually when it didn't work out for him, but was a worldwide famous minister who he got his degree in theater. And boy, was he good at theater. And that's what he taught the, his people to do was to, to use the theater of the pulpit instead mm -hmm. of, I just want to talk to you about relationships. I just want to have people here at the table and we can talk about Jesus the same Jesus that's in your living room right now, when you all talk about him, same Jesus that's at your table when you say grace, the same Jesus that's here now. If we don't have a different Jesus, we don't have a better, you know, way to him. If we misbehave, then we're farther from him. If we try to do his will, we're closer. Right, Tom? I would agree. That's, you know, you always want to try and keep the Lord on your mind. It just makes, it makes life more joyous. I mean, it, you know, uh, I was talking to you about the traffic today. There was some really bad traffic, and I told him, "Oh, we're gonna, we're barely gonna make it there on time." And when I got here, he said, "Well, how did it go?" And I said, "Well, me and Jesus said we had a good time going up the freeway. You know, not a big problem." You got to keep in mind that you're not alone; that Jesus is always with you. You know, it's kind of the thing I had a, I had a idea about. When you have a flat tire, you know, you, you get out of your car and you walk around and you look at the tire and uh, you can jump up and down and holler and yell and use all kinds of four-letter words. But if you think about it and you've got the Lord on your mind, you could, you know, <laughs> say a psalm. Where does my help come from? It comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. And... It makes that flat tire not seem like such a big deal. You know, scientists have proven that. They have ways to scan your brain nowadays called the double E PET and something else. They have two of them. And these tests uh, that they run show what area of your brain is active. And they have actually proven that if you'll move your focus towards anything you're grateful for. Now, this is secular research. This isn't the church doing right. this. But if you just move your focus to anything you're grateful for, that your body chemistry changes, your mind changes, uh, and the areas that light up change, and your body chemistry changes, and your immune system is better because you're not in the fight or flight mode where your body goes on hold for fighting diseases and all and says, we are gonna might have to run. Too many of our viewers, too many of the people in America are subjected to constant stress and I think that's what you're talking about if you're already if your bucket's already full of stress and you have a flat tire something's going to spill out and it isn't going to be something you want them filming right. especially if you're a minister you're not going to want everybody to, to know you when they're driving by watching how you handle this but it's it's important to keep your focus on the Lord right and to try to move that that tension level down that's that's part of what's going on there I think is is the when you're grateful the tension of the situation has gone away we're not we don't have to fight or run from anybody except traffic maybe and that response that tension and all well it's killing it's killing a lot of people in the church because they're so tense and that brings diseases and that brings uh, well it brings death and death more abundant is exactly what it brings 
And when you concentrate on the Lord, then all of a sudden, it's, it's a lot easier to say, well, to t tell you this, the story of the uh, little Amish husband that had just married his wife, and uh, this is supposed to be a true story way back when, 1800s, and she was all upset because all she had was toast and she didn't even have butter to put on it for his breakfast before he went out to work in the field. And they were proud people, and they didn't want to ask their parents. You know, they were close right. to both their parents. So she was crying, and he sat down and looked at that piece of toast and that glass of water, and he said, Jesus Christ and all this too? And you can imagine what type of marriage they had. I mean, that, that just tells you you can be upset or you can celebrate today. And the things in your life should not make as much difference as the people in your life. Remember, the world uses people and loves things. We love people and use things. Hopefully that's how you can tell a Christian. What do you think of that? That's, that's right along the lines of what, you know, I'd, I would really like to get to the point with my relationship with the Lord that my, one of my daughters had with me when she was about three or four she used to love to do anything with daddy and I know we'd take out I'd take out the trash and she wanted to help us so we actually made a bag of trash that was small enough she could carry I'd go to take out the trash and if I looked behind me I'd see two little hands above this bag carrying it we get to the trash can I'd throw my bag in I'd pick her up and let her throw her bag in the trash can and if you could see the joy on that child's face when she was doing something with her daddy. It didn't matter if she was what she was doing as long as she was doing it with her daddy. And I'd like to be that way about whatever I go through in life, I want to do it with my father, my father that's in heaven. Isn't it and amazing the only reason why it's not like that is us? Yes, it is. I mean, he's standing ready to, to love us moment to moment, give us his joy. Speaking of which, we have a musical guest today. You may recognize her. She's been here before. Uh, her name is Amy Golaby, and our Golaby, Golaby, and I'm going to let Christian tell you a little bit more about her. Christian, everybody here. Good to see everybody today. Amy Golaby's here from Houston, Texas. She's going to be singing a song called "Face of God." Her debut CD is it's called Left Unsaid. You can find it on iTunes and Amazon. To learn more about her, you can find her on the web at amygullaby.com. Thank you. I wrote this song about how I came to know God through my struggles. It's called Face of God.
Thank you. <clears throat> Praise God. And I'd also like to mention, uh, she's been on our show before. Both times we really enjoyed meeting with Amy and her mother, who comes with her. She's a delightful lady. And I wanted to mention her because she drives just as far as Amy does to be here. <laughs> so thank you, Amy and mother. So back to uh, the subject at hand, basically... Uh, we all have trials and tribulations in life. And Jesus didn't say he came to take us out of it. He said that he came to preserve us through it. But rejoice, little children, for I have overcome the world. In this world you will have flat tires. Amen. But rejoice, little children, for I have come, for I have overcome the world. So you can be an overcomer. It doesn't mean that you drive and never have a flat tire. It means that a flat tire doesn't have to flatten your day. Amen. It, so, means that a, it means that a flat tire can be an opportunity for you to spend some time with the Lord. You know, right. you can be thinking on the Lord while you're using a lug wrench. You can be thinking of the Lord while you're popping off a hubcap. Well, see, I'd be thinking along about that time, Lord, I could be thinking about you while I was driving down the road and the tire, and I'll go flat, too. Well, that's true, too. There, there's opportunity in both directions there. But I think it, it really comes down to if you're a Christian, you're almost forced to be an optimist. Yes. You have yes. to be an optimist because everything is going to be okay. Have God ever, has a plan. Have you ever prayed for God's will and then complained when he sent it? Well, I've, I've prayed for God's will and then sat back and wondered, how painful his will might be because often he puts us through those trials for us to learn something. But let me point something out to you that we've discussed before. The pain is always to your pride. It's like as if he's trying to remove this source of poison from you. And we're fighting him and saying, no, I want to hold on to my pride. You just, Lord, you just don't realize how great I am. You know, if you had any idea how wonderful I was, you wouldn't want to separate me from such a, a great thing as my pride. And I'm very humble about it too, by the way. And so when, when we finally realize that all the pain that we've ever gone through pretty much, except, you know, dropping hammers on your toes and things like that, but the vast majority of, pri of pain that you go through because you followed the Lord was to your pride. Why would God want to hurt your pride? I think that's one of the things that stands between us and God. You know, it's the idea of you could get out of the car and say, I'm going to change the tire, and God, you can just wait in the car. <laughs> Not a good idea. <laughs> Not a good idea. The, the, I think it's pride that lets us think that we've got things under control, that we can do something without him. And I think from the Christian standpoint, even if I could, I wouldn't want to. Well, I think most of our stress comes from trying and then trying yes. to cover up the fact that deep down inside we're a little bit insecure about ourselves. But we have this front. We were taught as children not to ever let anybody see your weakness. Don't air your dirty laundry in public. Don't, you know, the, don't let anybody see you cry. Don't, you know, that sort of thing. And the truth of the matter is only the most confident of people can afford to be themselves. It's an insecurity within us that causes us to act puffed up and arrogant and proud. So when the Lord keeps hurting our, our pride, what he's doing is he's making us more authentic. He's making us more children of the Most High God. And that's not a, a, a proud position and to be in for you, but like Paul said, if I boast, if I'm proud, let me boast of the Lord, you know, not of me. All of the things that I've done in the past, and I've done plenty, because Paul had done plenty, had a lot of awards. He was a Pharisee among Pharisees, but he counted them dung because all those awards and, you know, trophies. And it reminds me of a story uh, in Oklahoma City. Louis Gandara, bless his heart, he's gone now, gone on to be with the Lord. His dear wife, Kathy, is still up there, and I hope to see her soon. But anyway, uh, 
Louis Gandara, one time we were talking about this, and he said, that reminds me, that hole in my roof that you told me about, he said, I want you to fix it. Back then I did a lot of home repairs and things. He said, okay, Louis, but I need a piece of wood about this big. So he went in the other room and he came out with Chrysler Corporation's Dealer of the Year Award. This is a pretty big deal. There was a large cash prize that went with it. It was a big, beautiful deal. And he takes a hammer and he starts breaking all the things that stick up off of it. He says, here, take this. And so I took it up there and I mudded it down and slapped it over the hole and did some temporary repair over. And I thought, man, that's probably the most use he's ever got out of that plaque. You know, the best use out of it. Oh, yeah. It, I, whenever I think of my pride, I always remember Louis saying, here, use this. You know, he went over and took it off the wall of his office. <laughs> yeah. And like I said, it probably served him better on his roof keeping the rain out than it ever did on his office bragging about him winning that award one year. Well, I think pride is one of the things that stands in the way of so much that we try and do every day. Well, has pride ever gotten in your way? You know, come to think of it, there was a time I heard a song on the radio, and this was one I asked for it, and I got he got it. He got it to me. I heard this song on the radio, and it was a good Christian song. And I thought, Lord, I'm, I'm going to play that song for you. I'll learn it, play it for you. And I'm pretty good about picking up a song pretty fast. So I kept listening to the radio to hear it play again, just so I could get a better idea of how it went. I, they wouldn't play it. It just wasn't getting played. I got home, and I said a prayer. Lord, if you'll have them play that song on the radio, I'll listen to it. I'll learn it, and I'll play that song for you. <laughs> sure enough, a few minutes later, they played it on the radio. I picked up my guitar, and I was going all over this neck, and I could not find the key that it was in. I said, wow, that, like, hardly ever happens. Maybe they're using some odd tuning or something. So I said another prayer and said, God, if you'll help me find the key that it's in, I'll play this song for you. Well, I kept playing, and I found the key that the song was in. And it, you know how this ends up. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh I, yeah. You know, it's, I find the key it's in. I get a couple of the chords to the song, and there's one I just can't find. Lord, if you help me find this chord, I'll play the song for you. I'll do you the favor. That's right. Of putting my magnificent ability to work so that you can have this wonderful, valuable gift of my talent. That's right. And the only thing I need is for you to help me find this chord. <clears throat> well, I, I found the chord, got to where I could play the music to the song, and then I started trying to sing it and found out I can't sing it in the key that it was written. <laughs> so I'm playing with my capo, moving it all over the neck. I can't find a, a key that I can sing that song, and it's just not working out. So again, Lord, if you help me find the key I can sing it in, I'll sing this song for you. And I played a little while longer, and I finally found the key that I could sing it in. And once I got it down, well, once I got it down, that's a little... But anyway, once I got it down and was playing the song, I started to realize, let's see, I had to have... I said I had to say a prayer for him to make him play it on the radio. Had to say a prayer to find the key that the song was in. Had to say a prayer to find one of the chords that was in, that was in it, and then I had to say a prayer to find the key I could sing it in. Exactly, what part of that song did I do by myself? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lord, aren't you so blessed that we took our time to do this for you? That's right. <laughs> I, and and you know, that it was painful and it took a long time to do it. But you know, I learned something important there. Well, tell me what you learned. I learned maybe, just maybe, you should ask God and try and do things with him rather than for him. Well, I'll take it one step farther than that, and I know you've learned this the hard way too because we've talked about it over the phone till early in the morning sometimes, and that is ask God if he wants you to learn the song first. I mean, his, there's his permissive will, which means you're a brat, and you think you know what you want, and if it's not bad and you go and ask him, he might allow it. He might permit yeah. it. That's his permissive will. Then there's his perfect will that you don't know and won't know unless you go and you ask him, because you think you know, but you don't. 
So we think that we know so much we don't. God leads me in directions I never anticipated going. <clears throat> he takes me all over the whole spectrum of ministry. Never expected to be on TV. Never expected to do most of the things uh, that we're doing. But I'm going to tell you this. The only life that's worth living is the examined life. And if you examine it, you'll follow the Lord instead of leading. And that's the final word. Thank you for watching the Joy of the Lord show. Tune in next Saturday at 6 to share the joy of the Lord with us again. We have been chosen.